Patch notes time. Once again, we are a little bit late this time. The patch has been out for about two weeks now, and I'll actually show you some decks that I've been playing um, that are really fun and really good. So let's get into it. 120 new cards. Won't go into all of them, but I will highlight some good cards when I show off the decks. It's basically an expansion. The first expansion came right when they left uh, beta, which is very interesting for a card game, but let's go. I'm in. Deep, plus three, plus three, once your deck has had 15 or fewer cards left. Yeah, Deep synergizes really well with Toss, actually. Um, toss is like, it's just like milling out of your own deck, but instead of milling off the top of your deck, you toss from the bottom of your deck. Now that makes a really big difference. Uh, if you're like a Magic the Gathering player who's used to saying, okay, I'm going to mill three, and uh, you're used to that sinking feeling when you mill the card you really wanted to draw off the top of your deck, you see that get milled, and uh, your brain just goes into overdrive about how everything you've done up until this point has been a mistake, and the world is meaningless. Yeah. So that's not really the case with Toss. With Toss, it's you throw it from the bottom of your deck. So if you see that, you basically tell yourself, well, it was on the bottom of the deck anyway. It was the last three cards. I would not have drawn it anyway. Um, I'll also show you some cool stuff with Scout. Scout and Plunder actually have uh, some good aggro synergies. I would say Deep and Toss synergizes really well with control type decks. And Scout and Plunder synergize very well with uh, with aggro. Scout is really cool. Then we also have Vulnerable and Attune. I would say these are less significant keywords that have been added, especially Attune. Um, Attune is just you refill one spell mana. It feels very underwhelming. Vulnerable is cool, but Vulnerable is, is sort of like um, it's like Challenger but you give it to the, the thing you want to challenge instead of giving your unit challenger. So similar to what we've already seen. So, but it's, it's still a cool mechanic. I'm glad they added it. Yeah, so Bilgewater is the new color. All the decks that I played, including Bilgewater cards, have been very fun. So I love all the themes and archetypes that they added. Everyone gets a Moonstruck Poro, so if you see people with the, with the little pet on the left, it, and it's blue, it's the blue version of the Poro instead, um, everybody who logged in last week, up until last week, got that. If you missed out on that, sucks to be you. Also, login rewards. I think it's when you make an account, it's your first seven days you get a chance for rewards, just to get you in the habit. Oh, so they've added five levels to all the regions. And so if you finished all your region roads, there the five additional levels have some cool, or they have some powerful uh, chest rewards for shards, and they also have um, a card back. If you hit level 25, you get, a, you get a regional card back. Last level for each is a regional card back, and that's really cool. I've been playing like, so now you can have your card back that synergizes with your board. So those kind of synergies are... Um, with with all your theme, it's it's nice. It's the intimidation factor. The the Bilgewater board is actually super sick as well. Speaking of boards, the Slaughter Doc docs have been added. So um, for my for all my sea monsters, Maokai, uh, Bilgewater stuff, I run this guy. Oh, and um, personally, I'm not a huge fan of these two guardians. I like the monkey kind of. I don't know. The more I see the monkey, the more it kind of grows on me. But I do like that they're adding uh, these guardians consistently. I would love to see more. I want to see like 50 of them. New emotes. We actually don't see the best one that's been added here. 10 new emotes have been added. This thinking Quinn one, very good. Love that. The best one is Vladimir. He's uh, toasting. He's, he's drinking some wine and he toasts. It's a very, very good emote. There was actually a Reddit post of the emote tier list. It's really funny going, it goes into these. Um, definitely worth checking out. Card backs were added. 
Three new champion card backs got added. So Jinx, Garen, and Yasuo all got their own card backs. Honestly, I'm not a fan of the champion card backs so far. When they add some more, maybe uh, maybe I'll come around. But these three, they're, they're okay. You see them right here. I would much rather be running... See these class card back or the uh, the region card backs? This P and Z and these uh, the Shadow Isles one. I like these two card backs way better than I like the champion ones. So hopefully they they um they add a little bit more pizzazz to these hero ones. Or it might just be because I'm not a fan of these champions either. I've not played really any of these. They're all decent. I don't know. Maybe as maybe once I play around with these archetypes. I'll come around to these champions and then I'll think they're cool. So you get your you get to choose like which card back and which pet and which uh board you want per deck, which is cool. So you can play your PNZ deck which has your PNZ theme and you play your Shadow Isles deck which has your Shadow Isles theme. This is what I was talking about earlier. Ranked accounts got reset kind of. So you went back like two colors. My account got reset all the way back to iron cuz I was only in silver. I thought it was going to reset us back to zero, so I didn't bother climbing. But now that we're past this, it's time to hit diamond at least. Playing units on full boards, this is a big deal. Um, so last or, uh, before 1.0, if you played a unit, or if you had a board full of six units, you could not play another unit. Your, your board was just locked. Let's say you had six 1-1s one -ones and you wanted to play your 10-10 out of your hand. You could not do that. Um... Now you can. Now when you play a seventh unit, it lets you pick one to obliterate. And let's let's talk about the difference between obliterate and dying. So that means its last breath doesn't proc. That's the big thing. Which also means that that obliterate fish, that sea monster, is a card that got added uh, in the new set. That is a special type of destroy. Um, it won't, it, you know, let's say they play Ledros. That last breath, return me to hand, do all the damage to the Nexus. If you obliterate that, that never comes back. So it's a good counter there. Good to think about. They added some archetypes for the uh, Bilge Water, obviously. But yeah, this was a really good expansion. Or really good patch, you could say. Let's start simple. Basically, everyone came up with this list. Because the the sea monsters... Um, Package sort of leans you into it. But uh, this is my Sea Monster deck. Um, I run one Maokai, two Twisted Fate, and three Nautilus. Um, now that I'm looking at this, the reason I only run one Maokai is because I found the Twisted Fate spell to be a lot more useful than the Maokai spell. But after, like, this thing... I toss three, heal allies three. But after a lot of playtesting with these, I'm starting to look at it, and I think I really do want the second Maokai. Because the second Maokai is actually a good win condition. Um, over the Twisted Fate. The Twisted Fate is nice. But um, I'm kind of bouncing around with which one I like better in the Sea Monsters build. Maokai, Nautilus, and Twisted Fate are three champions that are, they work really well together. You can take any two combinate. you could take Nautilus with Twisted Fate, you could do Maokai with Twisted Fate, you could do Maokai with Nautilus, and you can do Maokai, Nautilus, and Twisted Fate all in the same deck. And there are really powerful decks that you can build around that work well with these three champions. This one is basically just the deep sea monster build. You you get your big boys. This is the guy I was talking about that obliterates and gets around Ledros. And all you're trying to do is make it to the end game so you have all your sea monsters online. This Jaw Hunters summons three more sea monsters. I like including Beast Below. A lot of people cut it, but I don't like cutting it in the Nautilus deck in particular because when he levels up, that thing's free. That's a zero cost seven set. This is a pretty straightforward deck. It's just big sea monsters, summon big sea monsters, survive until you're deep, and then you win. Here is one that's less straightforward, and I actually came up with this particular flavor. This is the Maokai Mill deck. And like I said, Maokai Twisted Fate are the two that I'm running in here. Um, there are definitely different options. 
But I think Twisted Fate is good because it helps you dig for Maokai, who is really the win condition of this deck. You can also win by making it deep and then dropping some big boys. Shipwreck Hoarder in particular is a great um, like backup win condition. Um, in a toss deck, having one copy is kind of dangerous, so you might consider doing something like cutting one toad and adding the, uh, sh what was it? Shipwreck Hoarder. So that's, this is basically where this one leans. The, the thing that I did was add this pilfered goods combo to it. So what happens is, um, you, you activate Maokai, he's in hand. Yeah, 25 things have died or been tossed. There are actually lots of ways to run this. See this haunted relic summons three spirits that makes three things die. I also like the, um, caretaker in this kill a unit to summon three saplings there's a lots of ways you can lean into this. Uh, Snapvine actually is a consideration for this t t type of thing. Could be a uh, alternate win condition. But um, so Maokai hits the table. He levels up. Your opponent's deck gets obliterated. Then they do something. And then here's the thing: you either have a board that can push one damage, or you play a Twisted Fate, or you do some one damage in some form or another, activate pilfered goods, two of them is all you need. If you have two, you win the game right there. Maokai, Twisted Fate, pilfered goods. Drops their deck down to four, draws the deck out, and then you end the turn and win. This pilfered goods part, not completely necessary. So if you want to make the deck actually like better, you pull out pilfered goods, and you add the caretaker and you find a spot for maybe one snap vine. This deck is probably the most fun deck that I've played in the expansion so far. Um, it's this Pursuit of Perfection Heimerdinger. I probably am going to run two Karmas in the long run. Is there actually a thing I can cut? It's kind of like a Highlander deck. So it's you see how many one drop one one ofs I have in here? I think I might drop one of these less important one ofs and add a another Karma. But this is a really fun deck because it plays all these different cards and all these different cards create more cards. So like Sonic Wave adds another card to your hand. Flash of Brilliance adds another different card to your hand. And so all of these cards are are like multiple like casts. And so it gets to your Pursuit of Perfection way faster. And uh, the cool thing about this deck is if you're getting milled out, all you got to do is hold your karma. All you got to do is draw karma. If you run into that Maokai mill deck that I showed you, all you got to do is draw karma. You wait until turn 10, you level up karma. Actually, I do need two karmas because you need the karma spell inside of ages. When you use this, it shuffles a karma into your deck, but on, but she's leveled up, so it casts it again and shuffles two karmas into your deck. So let's find a let's find a thing to cut. I think it's this uh Probably this jury rig. This 1-1 one, one burst. Get it out. Not consequential enough. Add another karma. Boom. So that's it. If you're up against the mill deck, you're, you're hard mulliganing for karma. You're trying to draw both karmas. And then you can go infinite against the mill. Queen Misfortune. This one, there are probably better builds of this, but this one really shows off the um, the way that Scout and Plunder can work well with each other. So this one, the idea is you are really just trying to stick stuff like Grizzled Ranger. Probably one of the best cards in the set, if not the best card in the set. 4-1 Scout, summon a 4-4 summon a uh, if it dies. So... You're getting your 4-1 swing with Scout. When Scouts swing, if they're the only if if 
you're only swinging with scouts, it refreshes your attack token. So basically what that means is scouts get to attack uh, an extra time every turn if you attack with the scouts first. What you're seeing is like Misfortune, she wants to see things attack four times. Well, if you have scouts on the board, you're attacking two times every turn. So that happens twice as fast. People attack. So Quinn and Misfortune work really well together. What we're seeing here is Island Navigator, that summons another scout. We're trying to, uh, this summons Valor, which is a scout. Here's a scout. We're just trying to, th there's a scout. We're trying to stick as many scouts on the board as we can. Get a really wide swing. This barrier is important because if you're swinging scouts, they're vulnerable, right? And that, that actually gives your opponent time to react. So putting up barriers is a good thing to do here. The first thing I would cut here is something like this Jagged Butcher. Plunder in general is kind of uh, a tough condition to hit, especially since there's not much reward for Plunder. Plus one, plus one, meh. See, four Demacia is amazing because it gives them plus three, plus three. Well, if you give your scouts plus three, plus three, they attack twice. So as long as they're not getting blocked and killed that first swing, they're getting an extra plus three, plus three, because they get two swings. So it works well. Anytime you get buffs and stuff like this, give other attack. This one, you actually only get it on your second attack because she's not going to be attacking with the scouts. But you can definitely see how that starts rolling there.